Welcome everybody to another Voice of Nick show. My internet's not going to be working today, so we are doing another upload episode. Don't adjust your sets. You didn't miss this one. It was not live. So let's uh, let's keep going with Peace Walker. We're, we just came back to the base, so we're going to see if we can uh, check on everything that happened. I'm just living in dread of seeing that second screen where it says, like, this guy died. Oh, man. No! I called it. Sorry, baboon. Alright, how's our helicopter? I wish you could sort it, though, by... Like, they have incomplete missions as one of the things, I believe, on the side ops. I don't know why you can't do that for these. Alright, our attack chopper's doing okay. I think this unit can just go right back out. I hope our chopper doesn't get killed. Let's send one more guy in there. This guy. There's so many attack chopper units. Alright, we have a tank, a BTR, a Love G. No, you know what? We gotta take out those. And we should probably get rid of the tank if we're not gonna... Let's just scrap this team for now. Small tank unit. Okay, we have the manpower for this. Otherwise, I think we'll just leave them. We have to get more vehicles. All right, here we go. Tapir. Tapir? I don't know how to pronounce that. Oh, love box rank three. This guy can sort of do anything. Wombat. Guns kill people? Bro, sometimes guns are the only things that save lives. Bro. I don't know if people were saying bro back in 1974. Let's just assume that they were. guys going on medical, combat, combat, medical. Oh, Cecile's really good at, okay. I've been thinking of giving up on studying birds and learning to fly myself. What do you hear my Quetzal call? Effect on missions. Tracking enemy soldiers in center of screen while using binoculars will have the same effect as enemy search. What is enemy search? I still don't know what that even is. I wonder if there's, there's got to be like a, a manual in the game somewhere that, that I'm not, uh, that I haven't checked, but they keep talking about enemy search, we don't even know what it is. Oh look, it's Cecile, a French ornithologist. She came to Costa Rica to research Central American bird populations, but got lost among some mysterious ruins and was taken captive by persons unknown. Alright. Get the full, uh, full view. They got the physics in full display. It's uh, notable that they only have <laughs> the two female characters so far are the only uh, models that you can like view. But, all right. I wonder if we'll get to play as her at some point. All right. Well. We're gonna hold off on her and the other one. We need to put somebody on the mess hall team, but I don't wanna put people in there unnecessarily. This guy. Don't worry, my cooking's 100% safe for human consumption. Okay, it's very, uh, sounds fishy. Intel. Analyzer rank 3. Nice. Wombat. We're gonna put Wombat on the uh, Intel team as well, I guess. All we have to do is be over 100%. We don't need to go crazy with the food. All 
Alright, this costs 45,000 for the love box. Analyzer, obviously want that. Device that analyzes information about enemies. Even when unequipped, you can still gather info on enemy machinery and higher ranking soldiers by pressing start. Wow. Well, that's really good. A bigger cardboard box. Might be able to fit two people, modified to improve durability. Are there any new types of weapons we can make? A uh, strike marker throne, I guess? We haven't even made the regular strike marker. Powerful enough to temporarily incapacitate even heavily armored soldiers. Let's just start making some of these guns. And we'll recruit one person, I guess. Oh, here's the trade screen. Now it looks like this is filled out. I'm assuming this is every feature that we're going to have available. <clears throat> there do not appear to be any volunteers. Play online to increase the number of volunteers. Oh. So that means we're probably not going to get any uh, traction out of that. But we got a few really good recruits. That lady is the one that we use as our main person in the side ops. So we certainly got valuable soldiers. Okay, locate the ID card is the only mission here. Maybe we should do another attack chopper battle. No, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Locate the soldier carrying the ID card and steal it. Make sure to leave room in your item menu to hold the ID card. Snake, to gain access to the lab, you'll need an ID card. You can get one from a guard in an orange jacket stationed in an area where you can hear Quetzal singing. To get the ID card from the soldier, do a body check. You've got to get inside that lab before the AI gets shipped out. Get a move on. You can steal items from soldiers by putting them to sleep or knocking them out and then doing a body check. Get close to the unconscious soldier and press the action button when you see the icon. Or you can sneak up on them from behind and do a hold up. It also works if the soldier's near death. Keep in mind though, if you wait too long, you'll have a dead soldier instead of a dying one. And you can't do a body check if you're holding the Fulton recovery device either. So don't try. Scouts are outfitted with camouflage to help them hide. Some of them look kind of weird, like they've got seaweed growing all over them. Ah, ghillie suits. Not much difference between them and any other scout in terms of combat ability, but it does make them harder to spot. I'm sure it does. You've come across these before? Yeah, the Soviet Union. The first time, it took me a full hour to find the guy and take him out. Kaz, do you know what they shine? Shine? Like how? Like, from their heads. Their heads? How about their hair? They have a lot of it. What are you talking about? How the hell would I know? How about a parrot? Did anybody hear a parrot squawk? A parrot? Look, Snake, you're talking to the wrong guy. I mean, Cecile's the bird expert. That was really good. Wait a second, what am I saying? You're not making any sense to begin with. <laughs> Never mind. It's a long story. I'll figure it out another way. Forget about it. Yeah, I'll do that. Anyway, we've already lost too many good people to these surprise encounters. Make sure you don't end up like one of them. I actually thought the conversation was over. That was really good. The the dramatic pause. Alright, good stuff. <clears throat> I do not know if I recall such large ruins being there. Well... Didn't you say there's a lot we don't know about Costa Rica's ancient civilizations? You talked about some giant stone balls, too. What are those? Oh, the stone spheres of Costa Rica? 
there are an assortment of giant spheres carved from stone that were discovered in the jungles of Costa Rica about 50 years ago. What's so special about that? What if I told you some of them are nearly perfect spheres and that they were carved out of granite, which is quite a hard substance. Mm. Could be good for laying a trap. And if they're spherical, they roll easily too. Snake! <laughs> Snake, be careful when going through areas you've passed through before. The enemy could be waiting to ambush you. And do you know how to identify this soldier with the ID card? Yeah, Cecile told me. He's in a forest with some Quetzals wearing an orange jacket. He'll be from the lab, probably out on patrol. Do a body check to see if he's got the card. I think every one of Amanda's things has an exclamation point on it. Did you see a Quetzal snake? Yep. What do you think? Did it look like a snake? Huh? No, it didn't look like a snake. Oh, really? Must be different from the Quetzalcoatl then. Quetzalcoatl? A winged snake from the Mayan and Aztec legend. A winged snake? <laughs> Weird, right? I bet it's UMA. Amanda and everybody says Quetzalcoatl is a Quetzal in the form of a god. But there's no way anybody mistake a snake for a bird. I think the legend of Quetzalcoatl came first. Somebody saw it and adopted it as their god before they saw the Quetzal. After that, somebody saw a bird that looked like the image of the god, and so they named it Quetzal. You mean it happened the other way around? Well, if you ask me, the Quetzalcoatl was probably a pterosaur that survived. I mean, it's got wings and, and it's a reptile, so it probably looks kind of like a snake, right? Pterosaurs live on in Africa even today. They're called the Congamato and the Elitziao. So it makes sense that there'd be pterosaurs on the American continent, too, and that they survived until the Mayan and Aztec eras. Wow. Well, lucky for us, they're not still around today. Who says they aren't? The dinosaurs supposedly died out 65 million years ago, and the Aztec civilization only rose about 600 years ago. If they managed to survive 65 million years, surely they couldn't be wiped out in 600. Pterosaurs survive today in the African countries of Cameroon and Congo. Each tribe calls them by a different name, like Congomato or Litsiao. There sure are a lot of dinosaurs running around the Congo. Well, a lot of the land hasn't been settled by humans yet. They've survived all this time, just undiscovered by man. But they're finding fossils in America, too. This one they found three years ago in Texas had a wingspan of more than 12 meters. If I saw a gigantic pterosaur like that, I'd probably call it a god too. Yup, I'm sure that's what the Quetzalcoatl really is. Ooh, we got a lot of stuff with Cecile. That was some escape you made from Strangelove's lab. Security inside was not so tight. The door to my room was locked from the outside, of course. But she took off the blindfold at bath time. So she could wash my hair. Huh. Pretty luxurious treatment for a prisoner. Mm, wasn't it? She wouldn't undo the handcuffs, but she washed my body for me instead. And with such gentle care. Why'd you run away? Didn't she say you could go home in a month? If your escape attempt failed, you'd be in greater danger than before. I was supposed to be giving a presentation on the distribution of Costa Rican bird species at a conference. The date was approaching quickly. So? I pretended I had to use the toilet and made my escape. I found an ID card and searched everywhere for my equipment and my tape. But a soldier saw me. It was a miracle I managed to get away. There was no time to find the tape. I do not care about the conference. I am lucky enough to still be in one piece. You bounce back quick. You don't? Not sure. I try not to dwell too much on the past, but... Then don't. There is no point. I'm so glad to be out of there. I never felt safe, you know? Tell me about it. Well, I think she's interested in women. And I think she took a fancy to me. Oh, well, that's, um... Uh... Besides, it is much nicer here. Was it just the two women in the lab? Mm, most of the time, we. Oui. Uh, and 
one of them, you only heard her voice, right? Yes, that is correct. Such a wonderful voice. It sent chills up my spine. What was the other woman like? Ah, don't even think about it. She has not the slightest interest in men. No, it's part of my mission to... <laughs> Only teasing. Let me think. I believe she was in her thirties. Pretty, with a good sense of style, but austere in her tastes. A very unusual woman. And she was doing research on AI. AI? So that is what she was up to. You know, she did say something interesting. That people should not be going into space. That it is too dangerous. Hmm. An automated control system for rockets, then. She said something about wanting to get closer to her dying wish. I think she must have been talking about an old lover. Lover? You mean another woman? Huh. <laughs> My. Aren't we curious about the women and other women? You want to hear the terrible things she tried to do to me? That's not what I meant. It's all right. You can be honest. You do seem to get along awfully well together. No, no. Not at all. I think you're hiding something. <sighs> Never mind. Aren't you supposed to be looking for the Quetzal? Here, I'll demonstrate its call for you. I knew it. Let's go over this one more time. First, I need an ID card to get into the lab. That is correct. From the outside, it looks like any other room. But on the inside, it is a state-of-the-art research facility. And your ID card got taken away from you by some guy in an orange jacket. Exactly. I had a Getzel singing nearby. It has not been that long since it happened. Hmm. It could be tricky if he's out on patrol. But if he's a stationary sentry, you don't think the Quetzal's moved? Its nest is probably nearby. I do not think it will go away anytime soon. Good. I'll get on looking for that soldier. If you forget what it sounds like, I will do the call for you again. Just give me a call anytime you'd like to hear it. Yeah, I'll do that. Let me get this straight. You were in Costa Rica as a bird watcher? Yes, I was. Not for pleasure, though. I am a researcher, after all. I am studying the distribution of Latin American bird species. With today's compact cassette tape recorders, even a woman like me can carry her recording equipment by herself. But it was a mistake to come alone. Hmm. Even so, there sure are a lot of wild birds in Costa Rica. Hmm. Aren't there? Over 800 different species, said to be more than 10% of all living bird species on Earth. How many can you name, Mr. Ornithologist? Why, well, I was just trying not to scare you. You should at least have a basic knowledge of Costa Rica. How about this? I will give you a thorough education, Mr. First Time Ornithologist. Uh, uh okay. Start by telling me about the Quetzal. Cassette Dinskit. I wonder what the kanji for that would be. Dan means electric, and I assume that's the kanji for that. I'm not sure what Dinskit would be, though. Cecile, what's that machine you said you used to make those recordings of yours? A cassette, um, something or other. A cassette recorder, or a cassette Dinske, as they say in Japan. Yeah, that. What is that thing, anyway? A portable recording device released last year by a Japanese company, Sony. It uses compact cassettes, making it far lighter than open reel machines. It still weighs five kilograms, but the exercise won't kill me. <laughs> it is user-friendly, too. All the buttons have markings on them, allowing you to operate it without looking at it. <laughs> Can you imagine missing the shot of a lifetime simply because you blinked? Oh, that would be devastating. But 
Where'd they come up with Densuke? Sounds like a Japanese name. Allow me to field that one. Kaz? Densuke's a nickname that comes from the name of an old manga character. Oh. Uh, was he some recording nerd, too? Don't give me that. Recording atmospheric noises is an exhilarating art. There's nothing like capturing the real world in action on tape. It's just like taking pictures with a camera, only with a microphone instead of a viewfinder. Um, sure. Listen to a tape with your eyes closed, and the scene just bursts to life in your mind's eye. Tell him, Cecile. Ah, absolutely. When I listen to the sounds of the birds in my apartment, it is like I am back in the forest where I recorded them. See? She's a Parisian. She knows what's chic, if you say so. And what do you like to record, Monsieur Miller? Me? Steam locomotives, no question. The roar of the engine, the throaty steam whistle. More animal than machine. Uh, don't get me started. Steam locomotives are a dying breed in Japan. I wouldn't mind going back for a bit and making some new tapes while I still can. Oh, you are less civilized than I thought. L less civilized? I detest those beasts. The noise frightens off all the birds. Then there is the smoke. I much prefer the peace and quiet of the forest. Uh, Cecile, wait. That... that came out wrong. I... <laughs> sure it did. I'm gonna look up Densuke. It's the nickname of a Japanese character, so it could still be a word. Densuke. Hmm. No. Maybe this? Electric scale? It could be it. There's another one that said assistance. Maybe it is just a name. All right. What do you want to know about Ketzel's? Give me the basics. Something that'll help me find one. Okay, then. First of all, as I'm sure you remember, the Ketsu's wings and back are emerald green, a dazzling blend of viridian fading into blue. Its belly is brilliant red, and its tail feathers are white. Such a gorgeous bird. Also, the male has two long decorative feathers, but only during breeding season. Among birds, Males are usually more beautiful than females. Like a peacock's tail. Yes, just like that. It is interesting to note that while their bodies are only 40 centimeters long, many cat cells reach over a meter in length when you include their decorative plumage. Cat cells typically build their nests by making holes in dead trees with their beaks, about three to four meters above the ground. They are omnivorous and eat everything from nuts to lizards. Where can I find one? Their habitat stretches across the entire tropical cloud forest. You may end up having to rely on its song to find one. Good to know. I will do an imitation. Listen closely. Hey, not bad. Ah, shall I do a chicken next? Cluck, 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 buck, buck, buck. <laughs> no thanks. That's enough. Are you sure? How about a monkey? Yeah, don't need that either. Oh, all right then. I'm pretty good at Quetzal sounds, actually. Costa Rica is the home to many hummingbirds as well. The people here call them Colibri. Colibri, huh? Hummingbirds are the world's smallest birds. Although they can vary from species to species, most are around 10 centimeters in length, and the smallest, no more than five. It is amazing to think that something so small can still be a fully developed bird. Hmm. I think a bird that tiny would get mistaken for a bug. Actually, they are often mistaken for sphinx moths. The little darlings feed on flower nectar, and their beaks are long and thin to help them drink up the nectar. They beat their wings far faster than any other bird. The smallest ones, over 70 times a second. Can you imagine? What for? They hover in midair while they suck their nectar. 
They can even fly straight backwards. Hovering. Like a helicopter. That's why Amanda and her unit called that chopper Colibri. Huh. I think it is an insult to the birds to give their names to weapons. Don't you? Don't ask me. Ask the birds how they feel about it. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the mannequins? Never. Unbelievable. You came all the way to Costa Rica and you've never even heard of them? I didn't come here to look at... Mannequins? are known for their beautiful courtship dances. The orange-colored mannequin is said to live on the Pacific side, the white-bearded mannequin on the Caribbean side, and the long-tailed mannequin is in the central basin. The long-tailed mannequins are especially distinctive. What's special about them? First, each young male picks an older male to teach him how to dance. Then, teachers and pupils all get in a group and dance for the females. However, only the teachers get paired off with females. The pupils practice their technique for seven years before striking out on their own and finding their own pupils. I guess it takes time to get good at anything, whether it's dancing or soldiering. Mannequins always have plenty to eat. Apparently, that is why they have so much free time to practice dancing. Hmm. <laughs> Unlike us, obviously. Another well-known bird of the cloud forest is the three-wattled bellbird. Wattled? What the hell's a wattle? <laughs> it is just like your beard, Snake. What? It is a piece of flesh that hangs down from its chin. Kind of like whiskers, but not made of hair. A hanging piece of flesh. Oui, and it only grows on males. Nothing more important to a man than his beard. So, these birds are in the cloud forest, too. They are normally found in the lowland rainforests, but they migrate into the highland cloud forests during breeding season. What the three-wattled bellbird is best known for, though, is its loud call. It makes these metallic bong and ding sounds, hence the name bellbird. It hardly sounds like a bird at all. Even an expert bird caller like me cannot do it justice. Oh, it doesn't sound like I'll be mistaking it for a cat's hole. Do you know the national bird of Costa Rica? Uh. Honestly, and you call yourself an ornithologist. The national bird of Costa Rica is the clay-colored robin. It's a plain-looking brown bird found throughout the country. Why'd they make it the national bird, then? Are there all kinds of better-looking birds, like the quetzal? Ah, the clay-colored robin has a most exquisite song. And I think it is part of the Costa Rican national character to choose a bird everyone knows and loves over prettier ones. Somehow these people don't strike me as being very... Latin. Speaking as an ornithologist, I am rather happy with that choice. Not all birds have to be pretty. Oh, and just so you know, the Quetzal is the national bird of Guatemala. The scarlet macaw and the great green macaw are also representative birds of Costa Rica. Macaws are a type of parrot. Enormous, stately birds. Macaw. I think I've heard that name somewhere before. <laughs> but of course you have. You are an ornithologist, no? Stop it! <laughs> so, tell me, where do macaws live in Costa Rica today? Oh, come on now. <laughs> I am only teasing you. Macaws live not in the cloud forest, but in the rainforest, on the Pacific side of Costa Rica. In the past, they were a common sight all across the country. But lately, the population has decreased dramatically. One possible cause is the pesticide spread to facilitate large-scale banana cultivation. Evicted from their own land, huh? Thankfully. Conservation efforts have been gaining some momentum lately. All right. Uh huh. We got more info here. Mate. What's wrong, Kaz? You sound beat. Yeah. The problems never seem to end around here. You should take a break. Share a cup of mate with the other guys. 
It'll give you a chance to connect with them. I wonder if Che and his men ever sat around and drank mate. I bet they did. Che was famous for his love of the stuff. Oh, man, whoever thought of this was a genius. You can put it in a gourd and carry it around, and there's a special straw with a filter attached so you can drink it any time. That's not all. It's full of essential vitamins and minerals, too. Nice to have in a guerrilla war when food is short. Yeah. Wish I had a chance to share some with a blonde Parisienne when I was out hiking. Well, how do you know about that? It takes a thief. Or should I say it takes a snake to know one? Snake. I want to try this mate now that he keeps drinking it in the game. This is kind of like the calorie mate of, uh, of Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, I guess. Where it's like a real, I assume is a real thing that uh, people actually drink. All right, let's try and get some from people that we haven't heard that much from. We just heard a lot of Cecile. How about some Amanda? We are Sandinistas, the heirs of General Sandino's will. Mm, Sandino, the father of modern guerrilla warfare. To you, maybe. To us, he's more like a real father. That why you named yourselves after him? Of course. La Frente Sandinista de Liberación Nacional. The Sandinista National Liberation Front is named in his honor. We share the general's goal, to take back our country's freedom. In his day, from America. In ours, from the despot Somoza. Mm, times have changed, but the song remains the same. Patria libre o morir, that is our slogan. El Che used to say the same thing, you know. Patria o muerte, the slogan of the Cuban Revolution. So, you're fighting for a socialist revolution too, then? No, it's not about ideology. We only want to live normal lives. We are sick of living in a country where you can be beaten for walking down the street, where you never know if your neighbor is snitching on you. Our goal is to give back the country to its people. Yeah, the Cuban Revolution started out like that too. We are few in number. But we will win. Victoria o muerte. For a revolutionary, there is no other fate. Augusto Cesar Sandino, general and hero of Nicaragua. Fifty years ago, conflict broke out between the political parties of Nicaragua. The U.S. Marines intervened in the name of restoring order. The only one who refused to listen to their call for reconciliation was General Santino. Huh. One man against the Marines. That takes guts. The General wasn't a professional soldier. Neither were his compadres. And they certainly could not match the Marines' equipment. But he used the land to his advantage, lurking in the fields and hills of Nicaragua, and using surprise attacks to harass the Marines. I know. I've read plenty of textbooks on guerrilla warfare. In the end, he drove them out. He was truly a role model for us. Yeah, but that was the 30s. Didn't the Depression have something to do with it? It takes cash to wage war. Perhaps. But there is no denying what the General accomplished. The people hailed him as the General de Hombres Libres. The General of free men. They loved him. And then... He was assassinated by Anastasio Somoza Garcia, commander of La Guardia. The father of the current Somoza. Somoza had the Americans backing. That is the way things were. The general may be dead, and the times may have changed, but his will lives on inside each of us. We are the sons and daughters of General Sandino. Hey. How's the watermelon business these days? Not bad. I hear the compass back home are hanging in there too. Good to hear. You know our nickname. I'm impressed. No wonder they call you boss. <laughs> you used to hide your weapons in hollowed out watermelons. Smuggle them right past the National Guard. You even transported pineapple grenades that way. The name caught on among sympathizers in the region and... What are you talking about? <clears throat> They call us watermelon sellers because the general's name sounds like the word for watermelon, sandia. Really? Si. Damn it, cuz.
All right, we got the sneaking suit. We have to get rid of one item. So I guess the ID card we don't need anymore. Uh, what else do we have? Do we have a box? Let's try using our new box. And that's it. Go. All right. There's supposed to be a capsule singing close to where your target is located. Keep your ears open. Oh! Look at that! I can hold LT and it'll zoom in on enemy. Huh. That must be what enemy search is then. Freeze. <gasps> Oh crap. Bridge. Oh yeah, look at that scanner. Oh wait, that's level 2. Well, that's still good then. <laughs> we'll soon be having level 3. I just got a little placebo effect there. <laughs> oh, that's a bird, but that's not the right bird. Fulton recovery helicopter is complete. If you forget what a Quetzal sounds like, give Cecile a call on the radio. She'll remind you. The soldier carrying the ID card is supposed to be wearing an orange jacket. I... I mean... Oh, use Kodak? <laughs> no, that bird doesn't sound like the one. Damn, this enemy search is pretty useful. There's a guy. I wonder if he's going to turn, though. Yep. Make sure you don't kill the soldier when you do your body check. Oh, he's shivering. It's cool because... Oh, there's a prisoner. It's cool because this makes me like pay attention to the background noise in a way that we never did before. Like, I don't even know if we've heard these bird sounds before or if they're just inserting some of these unique ones for this mission. But... I think that's the thing that the Metal Gear Solid games are always really good at, is like, 
they'll introduce a puzzle or a gameplay element that makes you totally rethink the way that some of the things that were already there uh, work. Alright, so this area I'm pretty sure is not. Wilson recovery it. subject confirmed on board helicopter. So we have a lot of areas we can check here. Let's try not to waste our Fultons. How many do I have? Eight. Once you know which soldier has the ID card, do a body check. To do a body check, first knock the soldier out, or put him to sleep, or hold him up. That works too. <laughs> Need a reminder of that kettle call? Hmm? So we'll only take guys if they're C rank or above. Oh look, there's a guy. Oh, there's two guys. There's a sniper too. So they are facing back at us. They, I guess they know that we're coming in. Oh, there's a, another sniper or is that the same sniper? Got him. That might be a guy right there. Oh, that's a guy. So even when we're moving, we're still above 0% camo index with this costume. And that's probably the only one that has that. Because usually you're at like negative 30 when you start walking. So yeah, like that guy didn't see us when we were walking at full speed, but usually they would. Yeah, I knew that was a sniper. Free. I got the eye for it now. Oh, B rank. rank. I said I would take him. Fulton recovery helicopter is complete. So we have five Fultons left. At a certain point we have to keep like two of them free until we've checked every area just in case there's prisoners. But there are a, a lot of high level guys here. Can't wait until we upgrade our Fulton further. All right. Oh, that's a sniper back there. That's a guy. Oh, there's two snipers, both of which are looking directly at us. And that might be a third guy over there.
I didn't hear it. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. He, he only hears it when it hits the ground, not when it hits the wall. Freeze. C rank. Oh, that was not the Quetzal call. I just heard another sound, but that wasn't it. Don't need him. That's pretty definitive. So this splits off. We want to take the path that's to to our left. Yeah. And we have what? Four Fultons left for three areas. Four Fultons, yeah. Oh, this is the uh, helicopter fight area. I wonder if there's any guys here. I like how there's a lot of noise interference because of the waterfall. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Jesus, wow, that was close. Nothing there. I wonder if this mission is a snake only mission because technically anybody could recover the card. It probably is though because it's part of the story. Oh, now I feel like I should have gotten some night vision. Okay, that might be a guy right there. Oh no, it's not, but there's another guy. Let's check up here first. Yeah, there's a guy watching that area. I can't tell where he is looking. goes back to, yep. E rank. Okay. Somebody here. Ooh. Nothing here. We're getting pretty lucky. This sneaking suit gives us kind of like a little safety net where they'll announce themselves like that because they see something but they don't know that it's a person. The sneaking suit actually kind of seems overpowered, <laughs> but hey, if they give it to me.
D rank, no thank you, sir. And this is going to be the last area, I think. Yeah, so he's got to be here then. Because there wasn't even a guy in an orange jacket. Alright, that's not a guy, but there's got to be somebody around. I think that is a guy laying down. No, no, it's not. Yes, that is definitely the Ketzel. He must be nearby. She can hear now it. Look for a soldier with an orange jacket. I don't hear it. She's got a good ear. Oh yeah, it's right there. Yeah, I can hear it. Oh, there he is, orange guy. Not very camouflaged. I wonder what would happen if I did a hold up on that guy. I guess we could also do that. Oh crap, there's a guy right here. Freeze. Ah, another prisoner. Good thing we checked. You'll have to unequip the Fulton recovery device before you do the body check. Recovery subject confirmed on board helicopter. Oh, this guy's also a C rank. So we can take both of these final two guys. Yes, that is definitely the Getzel. He must be nearby. Now look for a soldier with an orange jacket. Aha! I bet you could use that ID card you found to get into the lab. <laughs> Unlike the card received from Huey, this will actually enable <laughs> access to Strangelove's lab. So now I'm curious, how can I get this guy to stand up? No, he won't get up. What if I knock him out and then wake him back up? What are you doing? You're gonna regret this. Start talking. You won't get any items if you kill someone. Start talking. Start talking. I like the sort of anime style that they fly up against the wall. This game definitely goes for more of like a comic book feel and I, I appreciate that. Oh, so now we actually have to go back and get inside the lab. Okay. Um, ID card C. So we can just run there because we've literally taken down every guard between here and there. Watch, there's going to be one guy that we didn't get. We'll hope for the best. Damn, I wish there was a way to get more Fultons in the middle of a mission, because like I would even take these E-rank guys. They'll probably still help our team if they were 
you know, if we put like five sort of good guys onto the uh, R&D team, it'll still make up, you know, the amount that one good guy would be. And it's not like we're going to run out of uh, space at Mother Base anytime soon. There's like, what was it, like 250 was the maximum, something huge. Even when we're standing, the sneaking suit only has negative 21% camo. Pretty crazy. If I can't get up there. Alright, here we go. Heading in. joy or pleasure waiting for the one I despise don't move don't move you men and your guns you all say the same thing I suppose you're here to destroy my research yes I know just as I know what you did ten years ago go on kill me like you killed her Kill me like you killed the boss. Kill me! What exactly do you... Come on, Snake. Or should I say Big Boss? That filthy title given you as reward for murder. Do you still wear it with pride? You chose a shadowy country over the mentor who made you what you are. You brought despair to good soldiers everywhere. You used the pretext of a mission to kill a true hero. Is that what you call loyalty? Answer me! The boss. Well, what do you have to say for yourself? She betrayed America. She stole a Davy Crockett and then defected to the other side. She used an American nuclear weapon to attack Soviet territory. The only way for Washington to prove its innocence to Moscow was to eliminate the traitor themselves. Boss's death was the only thing that could have prevented all-out nuclear war. Is that what you call the truth? It's the truth as it was told to me. So the truth is that you sullied the reputation of your mentor, the woman you loved most in this world, before you buried her? It was my mission. Huh. So that's the conclusion you came to in order to live with yourself. What's the boss to you? I'm the one she abandoned when she left this world. I won't rest until I get answers from the woman I loved. You and I are the same. We are the walking dead. Would you like to meet her? The boss is gone. Not so fast. You'd like to meet her, wouldn't you? I can arrange it. You took her life. 
I gave it back. You what? Care for a sniff? It's only snuff. You're a cigar man, aren't you? Well, there's no smoking in there, so if you want to meet her, you'd best partake now. <coughs> Follow me. This is my baby, my morpho butterfly. It's neither pupa nor cocoon, but an amargo. A complete individual, in the fullest sense of the word. Is someone there? <gasps> we have a visitor. I'll introduce him. Don't try anything foolish. As long as we're in here, I can induce you to carbon at the press of a button. Who are you? A man. A warfighter. Oh, is that you? I call it the mammal part. Mammal? For my participation on the project, I demanded access to all information on the boss. Everything the CIA had. Her personal history, military records, physiological data, correspondence, the files for every operation she took part in, every decision she ever made at every possible turn, what she took and what was taken from her, her pain and her pleasure, her joy and sorrow, her life and death. And yes, even you. Why, why would you do that? Coldman sought an MAD-based AI that would deliver an effective retaliatory strike against the most appropriate target in response to a nuclear attack from a hypothetical adversary. An unmanned device to act as a deterrent capable of making the decisions and taking the actions that human beings cannot. I therefore concluded he required a cool, calculating machine, programmed to inflict swift, sure, and utter annihilation upon the enemy. No retaliation, but he took it upon himself to come up with a different answer. He said he needed the thought patterns of the very finest rational mind, one that thought on a global scale, took both past and future into consideration, and reached the best decision, no matter how painful. And that's why you asked for everything they had on the boss. It was the logical thing to do. I knew of only one person who could be entrusted with the fate of the entire human race. What's your real goal here? To clear her name. Why was a legendary hero forced to betray her country? Why was she targeted for assassination by you, her most beloved disciple? I have no use for fabrications. I want the truth. The boss's last will. You must be dying to know yourself. No. No. She abandoned her country. Abandoned us all. Really? You think you understand her feelings? You're trying to recreate the boss's last will. Is that it? Why don't you ask her yourself, Jack?
response. Oh god. Discontinue. <laughs> I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. <laughs> I wonder if I uh, would have gotten a different result if we didn't choose to take out any of the boards from the uh, mammal pod. It would be interesting to try and see that because it seemed like the the voice was changing and then it seemed like she t stopped the thing because the voice was changing. I'll give him something to shoot at. <sighs> oh, there's strange left. We got the 1911, twin barrel, M10 suppressor, analyzer rank 3, nice. New plant. Oh man, we have 14 new people. All hostile. Morale going down. Yeah, look at these plants now. They're looking real good. So they're kind of like rebuilding the plants, not necessarily just, uh, not just like adding more. That's cool. All right, let's give this a save.
Ladies and gents, that is going to do it for Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker this time. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more of our channel, make sure you go to twitch.tv slash thevoiceofnick. You'll see all the live streams. I go live three times a day, seven days a week, and sometimes if my internet doesn't work, uh, I will upload the videos instead. So we never miss a show. Guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.